Now, across Texas, the issue is. I'm Stephen Dial in Dallas. I'm Greg Grugan in Houston. And I'm Rudy Koski in Austin, and this is Texas, the issue is. Republican lawmakers in Texas delivered on a promise Governor Greg Abbott made to send more aid to funding a border wall and also tightening border security. SB4, which is very controversial, would allow any officer in the state of Texas to arrest someone they think entered the country illegally. I spoke to North Texas Representative David Spiller, who carried the bill in the House. States have every constitutional right, authority, and, and ability to secure their borders. That is a right that we have in Texas, and I would suspect in other states as well. That's not in conflict, in my opinion, with uh, the U.S. Constitution. SB4 has been controversial since you guys have rolled this out. Why do you not see it as something that should be controversial? I understand the arguments that, that folks on the other side are making. I'm sympathetic to that. It's just a policy decision and approach as to how we want to tackle the problem of illegal immigration. Uh, the Biden administration has absolutely failed and refused to secure our border, to protect Texas, to protect our nation. And, uh, and will not enforce current immigration law and policy. And so uh, it is incumbent now for Texans to step up and, te and protect Texas. The bill, if it becomes law, would empower local and state law enforcement to, if they suspect someone uh, who crossed the border illegally, they'll be able to arrest them and they will go before a judge. Do you think this can open the door to racial profiling? SB4 is very specific and talks about illegal entry. If you, if in a, and an officer would have to have probable cause to believe that someone crossed into our state from a foreign country illegally at, at some place other than a lawful port of entry. And if so, that's a class B misdemeanor. That, that is currently under federal law now. So it's, it, there would have to be probable cause uh, for the officer to do that. So you have an officer making that determination, then you would take them to an independent magistrate who would also confirm or and determine if they believe that that existed. And if so, a prosecutor could move forward with that case or the people under under this version of the bill would have the option to say, look, yes, uh, and I'm in lieu of further prosecution, I'm willing, if you'll take me back to a port of entry, I'm willing to go back to the country from which I came. Isn't this just going to aid in overcrowding prisons and who pays for that? How, how, do, how will SB4, if it becomes law, I mean, it's going to possibly dramatically change at least our southern county jails, right? I think most people will opt into, instead of being incarcerated in a jail or a facility or a detention facility, would say, look, I'm here. Yes, I got here illegally. Yes, I don't want to be prosecuted and sit in a jail. I'm willing to go back to the country. And so we, those people would not be incarcerated. They would be detained temporarily until they get to a magistrate. But then the magistrate would de determine the method and manner in which they're transported back to the port of entry and they would return. So that's not really resulting in further incarceration. As a matter of fact, uh, it would, I think, could be less incarceration than what we have right now where we're prosecuting people for criminal trespass. That's generally the only tool, unless uh, an officer sees something more serious as an on-view offense, something of a felony or something else, generally the only tool that they have now is to prosecute people under criminal trespass. Do you think there are enough exceptions and carve-outs where this isn't just a, a, a law that will just round up people who law enforcement may think enter right. the country illegally. We don't want schools to be a place for, you know, where we're arresting people, uh, you know, or anything like that. So public and pri or private, primary or secondary schools, uh, churches, synagogues, places of worship, uh, places of, in fact, I even expanded from what I did before under hospitals to head healthcare facilities, as that term was defined under law, which is much broader, and saying, look, if someone needs medical attention or medical care or health care in any way, we don't want to inhibit that in any respect. Rudy Koski, SB4, in one word. You know, I'm going to take uh, a word that the representative used and modify it, and my word is conflicted. Greg Grugan. Stephen, lots of options here, but I'm going with defective. 
The Fox Texas trio is back to discuss Senate Bill 4. Governor Abbott will sign it. We don't know when. Rudy Republican said that this bill would not lead to racial profiling. What's your take? You know, uh, Stephen, that's the standard response to the standard accusation from Democrats, which is why my word is conflicted for this. Now, it's important to understand SB4 does not change the current rule of law. The representative is absolutely right. It doesn't change the law regarding probable cause. That's a big, important, important point. No matter how many times those opposed to the legislation want to claim that it will, or how many times they want to claim that it's unconstitutional, what it will be is a state law, a state law that has to follow state law, period. Now, I remember the last big immigration debate at the Capitol that, and the big cry then that the proposed legislation that was being discussed was re Republicans are trying to pass a show me your papers law. Remember that, guys? And the hardliners, of course, shouting back their own insults like Matt Rinaldi, a state representative at the time, claiming he, you know, he called ICE agents on the phone and reporting people up in the House gallery during a heated debate. And that triggered a very ugly scuffle on the House floor with Democrats who took offense to what he said, and rightfully so. Now, it's worth noting Rinaldi is currently the state GOP chairman who has been seen in a, at a building with leaders of a right-wing pack meeting with a Nazi sympathizer. But, of course, that is another issue is my point is we are hearing the same political rhetoric again and again and again. And we even got another tense moment on the House floor just a few weeks ago. This fight is following the same old script, and I wonder if it can really make a difference without a broader reform plan from the Fed. So, Stephen, you know, it's, it's a tough call. Greg, what do you think? Ah, oh, I'm blown away by that, Stephen. Racial profiling is human nature and, and happens, I'd venture to say, hundreds of trillions of times on this earth every single hour. That said, this law, if it survives constitutional challenge, sanctions potential law enforcement profiling of literally half the Texas population based on their ethnic heritage. Look, few in the media have raised the border security alarm as consistently as I have, but it's patently foolish to suggest unintended consequences won't occur as a re result of this authority, and some will suffer. My guess is Spiller and others fully understand that and are ready to accept the collateral damage as the price of more immigration enforcement. And as it's been pointed out, it won't be their family members subject to the additional scrutiny. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot to unpack on, on that. We're going to shift a little. Rudy Democrats on, during the floor debate said that this will lead to overcrowding jails. Representative Spiller said the migrant has the chance to go back to the port of entry. Do you think this will overcrowd jails, at least in the southern part of the state? Stephen, I think odds are, given the choice, most who are caught will take the free ride to the border bridge and not the trip to jail. And then most will probably come back across the border. Let's not forget what Speaker Phelan said at the end of special session three when he slammed the Senate immigration bill, essentially SB4 as it stands now, describing it as a giveaway, claiming it would give migrants a reason to cross the border by providing them free room and meals if caught. Now, in special session four, we get a flip-flop in the House adds the Senate's incarceration language, SB4 is what we have now. Meanwhile, we do know shelters are already overcrowded under the Biden administration. Meanwhile, we do know migrants are sleeping in the streets. And meanwhile, some are being put up on federal parkland in New York. So Stephen, here we go again, wash, rinse, repeat, and stay conflicted. All right, Greg, quickly, do you think that with this law, if it goes in place, are we going to start seeing more arrests in areas that aren't even close to the border? Let's say Denton County, Texas or Amarillo? Yeah, I do. How many is impossible to say, but just think of the margins here, the edges. This authority gives automatic leverage they haven't had before to 80,000 Texas peace officers. I'm talking leverage to extract information, leverage to threaten, and leverage to potentially extort from vulnerable people. I mean, probable cause for a stop becomes the tone of your skin, your accent, or even the clothes someone is wearing. Look, I don't think it's a stretch to say this law will likely empower peace officers to sweep through ex East Texas colonias. I have a feeling this is not the last time we'll be talking about SB4, which will be signed by Governor Abbott one day soon. That's all the time we have for now. To see this episode or any of our past ones, go to our station's YouTube channel. And keep the conversation going by messaging us on, on social media. 
Join us next week when we talk to a leader from the Lone Star State on Capitol Hill, Foreign Affairs Chairman Michael McCall. We're talking Israel. In the meantime, be sure and let us know what you think the issue is.